please see. Uh, I want to, uh, you know, put across uh, a, a, an important point here that I am now going to make use of REST controller and repository directly. From the REST controller, I will make a call to the repository. But I hope it is crystal clear to you all. In real life, you will never ever do this. Your REST controller will talk to the service. Service will talk to DAO. DAO in turn will talk to the repository. Please confirm you are crystal clear on this point. Yeah, very clear. Okay, but here's just for the sake of learning in order to avoid the efforts of actually creating those mid layer classes. I'm directly using, uh, uh, you know, the controller and I'm directly using the, uh, 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 you know, repository from the controller. Okay, so I'm going to get started with the repository, which happens to be which repository over here, training repository. You can see this training repository here, and this is already running. Let me run this and please let me check that my get all trainings v1 slash trainings, which returns to me. You can see this find all training repository dot find all. This works as per expectations. Okay, let me run this. Okay, so I will just go back here to my postman, and when I go back to my postman, I will simply say, and you know what? I can also go back to my Chrome. And I can simply say local, okay, local host colon 8080 slash v1 slash trainings. And this will give me all the trainings. You can see this here, all the trainings over here. Why come, how come, just one training? Ah, the reason is what? Because in this, you know what, uh, this, training is mapped to training demo what i'm going to do is i'm going to map this to actual training so that you get a lot of data and we will be able to actually do a lot of things over there okay because we are we are now learning jpa okay what is the topic jpa right ins and outs of jpa uh, repository now when i say retrieve you see all of this is there if, if if you okay i hope you know about that tool there is something called json online editor okay and you can always click on that. The first line is JSON online editor.org. It's absolutely free. Just paste your JSON here and you can just click here in order to format. You'll get the entire. Got that? You'll get the entire JSON. Or else, yes, if you're using Postman, then nothing like it. And Postman is very, very sophisticated. Right there in Postman, you will be able to get all the data. Here you go. You saw the beauty right here. Everything, my application and everything. See, this is the this is the benefit of design patterns. Like, you know, you're saying training report or find all everything, and then but then you just change the name of the table. You're getting data from a different table. Saw so the beauty, right? <laughs> okay. So here I'll say v1 slash. I'll say customers. I uh, said trainings, and here I will say 8080. And yes, it is. Here you are, and I get all the data in. Oopsie, I get error. 8080 v1 slash Trainings. Oh. Oh, oh, sorry, post. Yeah, you got it. See, I've got all the data. Now let's go step by step. You know very well that we have something called a particular training ID also. You remember this? I had said find by ID. What this find by ID will do? Like for example, you see this, I've got 45 as one of the things Spring cloud data flow. Okay, I can just come here slash 245, sorry, 245. I say send and that API gets executed. I get exactly 245. You can see this, this is the API I have had. I hope you all are all with me. You're getting it, right? This is something that we have already done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Now, I have used a function on training a repository. Before I move on, Training repository, I'll go to the actual interface and you see this, I did not declare anything here. From where are these functions coming? Find by ID, find all, because I have extended this from JPA repository. JPA repository in turn is extended from paging service and, separate and, and sorting repository. That in turn is extended from current repository. It is over here that you've got find by ID, find by all. You can see that, right? You can see this? Correct, find by ID iterable. So this is this is where it is, and from here you will be able to. I mean, this is how from here you get those functions because this is all extended, 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 right? It is all inheritance. So if it is inherited on an object of this type, I will be able to get all the functions, and that's how we that's how we are getting. 
coming back here. The first thing that I would like to share with you all today is there is training report dot find by ID finder method. There is also something called get one, a function called get one. And I can pass training ID as a parameter. What is the difference between this and what is the difference between this and this? Here I will directly get the training object. Okay, training is equal to, I'll say whatever the training object is. And here I will not get an optional, whereas here I get an optional. If at all there is no training with this ID, I'll write system.out.println, I'll say training. Okay, I'll say training object, right? So the training object here, the one which I've just obtained over here. And I will say plus, I'll say this training op over here dot get. Okay, so optional is actually an object on which you can very well get the value. You can say dot get and the optional object, whatever is there in that optional object will be retrieved. Okay, now see the behavior of these two things. I have fired both. Okay, see the behavior now. I will just refresh. Now I will show one more thing to you. Okay, okay, let me refresh this. I'll take that later on. Okay, so now, okay, it's deployed successfully here. I go back and I say 245, that's fine. And I say 245, I get the data. Twice it, uh, it has fired. And you can see this training, the, I'm getting the complete training object here. At the same point of time here also, I'm getting the complete training object. It is the same training object that I received, right? Internally, Hibernate is the underlying implementation of JPA. Hibernate will never fire it to select statements. Okay, now, my dear friend Ram will be very, very happy when I show this to him. I will go to resources. I will go to my application.properties file and I will say spring dot show SQL, sorry, JP, spring dot JP or show SQL is equal to true. You know what, when you do this, you know what will happen now? Any idea what will happen? Spring dot JP dot show SQL to true. Now from my Java application, any SQL going to the database will be printed here on the console. Oh. <laughs> when you do this now when i click on send you can see this it has printed the select statement here you can see the select statement is printed you got that and tell me i fired here let me in fact do this for you because it is um, very interesting see without me teaching you all of these things also you will be able to start working on the application I'm sure you will be able to start working on the application. But when the training happens, systematic training happens, you save yourself from spending time while writing the project on trying to figure out why is that happening and why is this happening? You know, you spend, you, you, you save yourself from all of that frustration by having a systematic training, you know, beforehand. That is the reason. How many times did I, am I saying find by ID, find by ID, find by ID? How many times did I say? three times over here and you're also training report on get one you're also get one is actually what getting me the training object right getting me the training you may think that four times that uh, you know select statement will be fired absolutely not please take a look it will fire once okay take a look it's so very intelligent i say send okay it has fired only and only once take a look only once it did not fire the sql statement more than once Got it. Now what I'm going to do is, so that it has fired a space statement. Again, I'll say send, you can see this. It has fired each time, each request, you know, you see this, it has fi it fires. Here when it enters, it fires only one. Okay, one, select, one single time select statement. Now what happens is, super. Okay, I'll keep this after this. Okay, so we are talking about what we are talking about JPA, Java Persistency API. This is an API. It has got the list of all the interfaces declared in it. This is not the implementation. The implementation that is actually by default used by the JPA by Spring Boot is Hibernate. Hibernate is the framework. Hibernate is not the API. JPA is the API. Hibernate is the implementation of JPA. 
I repeat, Hibernate is the implementation of JPL. Right, the entire code of actually firing the select statement, update statement, delete statement, and the entire you know set of features that you get is actually from here. Hibernate provides all of these features. JPA is just the API. There is another implementation of uh, you know JPA. So I will write here IBATIS is another implementation. Very few people use it. Another implementation is Toplink. These are all the different different implementations of what of JPA. JPA is the API. You got that? Whenever I say API, it has got the list of all the interfaces, and it has got the functions declared on the face of these those interfaces. For example, you have seen now uh, for yourself training repository. What is this? This is an interface. What is this? This is an interface, right? What is this? This is an interface. All of these are interfaces. So who is supposed to someone or the other is supposed to provide the implementation. These are the ones that provides the implementation out of which this is not extensively used. Hibernate is the default one in Spring Boot. It is very extensively used. So far so good. Hibernate is the implementation of JPA. So far so good. Sure. Yes, friends. Okay, nice. Now I will just simply, you know, for the time being, you know, I'll just keep the hibernate stuff over here. But before that, very quickly, and I will take a pause after explaining this, you have to ask questions to me, whatever the questions are, or else at least note it down in such a way that in future, if you come across any such points with respect to what I'm explaining now, you can ask it. Consider this is your Tomcat server. Okay, this is your Tomcat server, right? Next, okay, this is your Tomcat server. This is your Tomcat server. And then you have, uh, you know, the mobile application. That mobile application will send a request to your Tomcat server. You will have a browser application, right? A desktop application that will also send a request to your, uh, you know, your Tomcat server. This is how your Tomcat server is. When the request comes from any one of the clients on Tomcat server, or for that matter, the Netty server, for that matter, your uh, .NET based IIS server, internet information server, or whatever server in this world. For no, no, please, we are busy. Sorry, sorry. Thank you. No, no, no. It's okay. No, we don't. No, अच्छा तो यार रखते जाओ. यार रख दो और चले जाओ. हाँ. Thank you. So see, we have our. Uh, uh, yeah, we have our Tomcat server here. So any server it is, whether it is Tomcat server or any other application server, it may be JBoss, it may be WebLogic, it may be WebSphere from IBM, it can be Oracle application server, whatever it is. Each point of time the request lands on the server, this kind of application server has got something called a thread pool. I repeat, it has got something called thread pool, okay? It has got something called a thread pool. I'll say 50. Correct thread pool is there. This thread pool contains threads. What this thread pool contains? It contains threads. And by default, if at all I enable the thread pool here, okay, let me go to my terminal. I'll go to software. I'll go to Apache. Do I have Apache software over here? So sorry, CD Apache. Oh, I have Apache. Software here, you can see this is Tomcat server. In this, I will find you'll find configuration, and in this, you will find server.xml file. You'll find server.xml file. You can see my screen here, my server.xml file. Okay, and there you will find something called you can see this connectors over here. You can see this Tomcat thread pool. You can see by default it is 150. What is the number of threads in that thread pool? What will be the number of threads? 150 threads will be there in that thread pool. Okay, so suppose here I have, you can configure it, I can change that. Suppose say 150 is the default one and that's I have. Now what happens is this. Okay, now what happens is this. 100 and what do you mean by thread? 150 here, 150 threads, huh? 150 threads are there in the thread pool. Okay, now what happens is the moment the request lands on this Tomcat server, it actually picks up one of the threads from the thread pool and serves the request. 
another request comes it will pick up another thread from the thread pool and it will serve the request similarly if there are 150 concurrent threads landing on your application server all the 150 threads will be brought out of the thread pool one thread will serve one request hammer this down in your mind right hammer this down hey you guys don't leave me up huh? You all will be able to clear the interviews. <laughs> <laughs> you don't expect that from me. <laughs> oh, my, my dear friend. No, no. I'll tell you what. I'm a kind of a person. All praises be to God the Almighty. All praises be to God the Almighty. Sincerely, it's coming from the bottoms of my heart. And even with, my, with this kind of training that I'm doing, even if to get some good job, you know, I'll be happy. If this is good, I'm happy. I'm good. Absolutely. <laughs> God bless everyone. Yeah. Kya jata, yeah. See, I am getting my daily bread and butter. You know, I'm not falling short of anything. And while that is happening, if others are also, you know, benefiting, it's good. Yeah, nothing bad about it. Okay, coming back over here. See this. So, you've got a thread pool, 150 threads. Yeah. So, this is standard across all the application servers. I'm saying 150 here, this can be 150, this can be 200, this can be 100, whatever it is. But one single request will always be, you know, one request, okay, one request is processed in one thread. Hammer this down in your mind. This is, this is the crux of the matter in case of non-reactive applications. Now, don't worry, I will take you all through what is reactive application later on. But as of now, understand one request is processed in one thread. And while that request is being processed in that thread, that thread is busy. I repeat, that thread is busy. That thread will not be able to serve any other request till the time that response is not committed back. The entire request is processed and the response is not committed back till that time this thread is busy. And while that thread is busy, it is needless to say that if any other request lands on the server, it will be a different thread that will be brought out of the pool in order to serve that request. I hope this is crystal clear. I'll take a pause. Any questions, any doubts here? Clear, sir. Very clear. Great. Super. I'll still keep Hypernet aside for the moment. Now, the, it lands on your Tomcat server. Now, see the beauty here. You will be able to relate everything, inshallah. See this. Here, don't you think you have... Okay, let me change this from this to 15 here. Okay. Okay, right. Now, see this, friends. So, when the request lands, okay, and just imagine that the request that has landed is from either a mobile or a desktop application. I will say the request that has landed is... Um, slash v1 slash trainings okay this is what we are working on this is the request that has come from the mobile application where it we are supposed to display the list of all the training suppose it lands here don't you think you have something called a rest controller isn't it you have a component called rest controller and that rest controller you know the mapping stuff and i'll get mapping and there is a function that will execute there is a handler that gets executed here, this is a component diagram. I repeat, this is a component diagram. In component diagram, I am not getting specific to classes and methods in the classes. Components is what I'm showing. So what happens? This request lands over here and there is definitely, there is definitely a, you know, that request that has landed on the server. A thread will be brought out of the thread pool and that thread, I will represent that thread like this with the help of this. Okay, I'll put this here. Again, I put, you know, I'll bring that. And I will expand here like this up till here. Okay, okay. And I will try to make this, you know, much more. I'll say, okay, I'll, I'll use this and I'll make it like this, right? This is the thread. So the thread is picked up from the, so Tomcat is supposed to do what? Pick up the thread from the thread pool. That's what it is supposed to do. And it will execute that handler. You remember the handler which we have created? What is the name of that handler? Handle get trainings. You can see this here. You know, v1 slash trainings. This is the handler. Sorry, not this one. This is the handler that gets executed v1 slash trainings. Am I right or not? Okay, let me do one thing. Instead of saying v1 slash trainings slash, I'll say 245 is the request that has come. So which particular handler will get executed? This one, which is by ID, isn't it? Because there is a path variable here. You can see this here. Okay, so one of the threads will be picked up from the thread pool. This is that thread. Okay, this is that thread. 
this is that thread okay and this thread here okay is there fine so what is it in this rest controller it is this function that will be executed in which thread is this function getting executed it is getting executed in this thread and this will be one of the threads from the thread pool how do i get the name of the thread i write system.out.println i'll say thread is thread dot current thread dot get name okay now let me run this once again for you and i will print for you the name of the thread there okay i'm running this let's restart it you can see this once again i have put thread dot current thread dot get name i will go back to my postman and from postman i will again run this i will execute this api it gets executed i come back to my spring boot over here you can see this http nio 8080 exec 2 this is the name of the thread in the thread pool got it this is the name of the thread in the thread pool so this is that thread that you are seeing over here some kind of you know let me pick up the name from here okay let me pick up the name from here and let me go back to my and then here i will just put that name over here this is that this is that thread so this rest controller the function in the rest controller is executing in this thread okay then this rest controller in turn makes a call to what it makes a call to we know very well ideally a service class a service impl class ideally right for learning purpose i'm directly using a repository but then it makes a class it makes a call here like this all right and then this in turn will make a call to dao impl class and the dao impl in turn makes a call to my repository okay this is this is what it does and then finally it makes a call to my database this is my database which is actually an external system right which is actually an external system so from here the request goes to the database dao impl talks to this service impl talks to right this is how it is take a look now database is an external thing but all of this is getting executed in the same thread friends all of this is executing in the same thread all of this so what i'm going to do here is i will pick this up over here like this and i will put us you know i will surround this over here i will take a very very thin line here click right mouse button i'll set to back over here this entire thing that you can see here in the square here my dear friends is actually executed where in which thread in this thread so while while these components the methods the respective methods of each one of these components are executing in this thread this thread is busy and at this point of time while any one of these you know components you know uh, uh, I, let me put it once again like this that if any method of any one of these threads while it is executing in this thread okay sorry any methods of any one of these components while it is executing in this thread that thread is busy and while the thread is busy if there is any other request coming from any one of these clients it will pick up another thread i repeat it will pick up it's quite possible that at same point of time try and understand this isn't it possible that at, this, at exactly the same point of time we get v1 slash training slash 245 exactly the same thing 245 isn't it possible that i get this from here i'll say send to back okay don't you think it's quite possible isn't it that i get exactly at the same point of time what do you think what will happen if this is happening exactly at the same point of time actually what will happen is it will pick up another thread why because one thread is already busy it will pick up another thread and in that another thread it will again execute all of the methods that are involved of all of these components it will execute the same methods because it is 245 right it is the same api it will go through the same flow my dear friends it is going to go through the same flow but this time when it goes to the flow there will be another thread definitely not this oopsie so sorry there will be another thread maybe the name of that thread is exec three here and then it is exactly the same thing my dear friends let me group this up okay and then i say you know 
bring me over here this particular thing you know this oh Oops. sorry okay i'll group it up once again okay now hopefully this entire thing is grouped oh no why is that so uh nevertheless uh i duplicate it no it doesn't work like that oops 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 so, so sorry uh i am going to once again copy this uh yes uh, it works okay so see this stuff i have this uh but this once again you can see this particular request that came in it will pick up another thread from here and that as a result of that thread this will get executed my dear friends try and understand this point here this will get executed so this will be a different thread and that thread happens to be this exec three and all of the same components will execute now tell me now i will take a pause again over here and tell me if you have any questions here any questions any doubts Take a look. Yeah, Tell me. There's very clear. All right. All right. Superb. And then here, this repository also will talk to the same database. There is no uh, doubt about it. Right. I'll just. Okay. All right. So I can still bring this database here like this. This is how it is. This is how it is. And then let me come back to 100 points from here. All right. This is how it works. Now. What happens is that this repository, as I told you internally, you know, there is another thing called Hibernate. There is another thing called Hibernate. Okay, I already have that, I'm sorry. I'll just bring that Hibernate component here in this. I have Hibernate. This Hibernate, this repository is the API. Hibernate is actually the one. Now, you know, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to drop this, okay. And it is Hibernate because finally, my dear friend, it is Hibernate that talks to the database. Okay. It is Hibernate that talks to the database. This is how it is. Now what Hibernate does is this. Per request, that means in that particular thread, for that particular thread, it creates a session object. I repeat, it creates a session object. Right. It creates a session object. I will try and live my level best to make this as neat as possible, but then still, if it is not neat, please bear with me. I'll try my best, okay? This Hibernate creates a session object, okay? I will give a different color to this session, sorry. I will give a... Oopsie. Yes, I will give a different color. So this is a, a, what it creates a session object. Okay, this is very, very important point that I'm discussing with you all. And nowadays it has become so easy and so simple that you don't even need to know about that Hibernate session object or else there is something called session. You can see this here. Can you see this session org dot Hibernate? Can you see this? See this here interface session. Extends shared session contract, blah, 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 entity manager and all. This is the session. And there is an implementation class provided by Hibernate for this session. Okay. You can see this here. org.hibernate.internal. .org there is something called session IMPL class, which actually implements, uh, okay, not the session directly, but it extends from this. And this ex this implements the session object hopefully no okay i'm sorry whatever is the hierarchy there but then this is the most important point session object it is this session object that I, whenever i show you an interface just imagine this there there is an interface but there is some or the other class that implements that interface and it is the object of that class finally which is there in memory all right that's how it is now what hibernate does is that i repeat once again it creates a session object Right now, there is a beauty point, beautiful point over here. Why do you think I did pick up this thread concept over here? The reason is that, 
okay let me explain this also over here the reason is that i have a question to you chalo first of all how many objects of class rest controller see this is the class that we created isn't it this is our class okay step by step i want answers from all of you all even if one answer is which is right or wrong i want every one of you all to answer to fail i hope you are you are also there with us who creates an object of this class hello yeah no wait my question is who creates an object of training rest controller class spring container very good spring container creates an object of this class got it ajman to fail is there or not yes sir uh, okay okay his his uh, voice is cracking actually maybe maybe because of internet connectivity right so who creates an object of this class spring container now my next question is there are two threads running over here there are two requests that has landed on tomcat server two different threads running and the rest controller executes in this thread also the rest controller executes in this thread also how many objects spring container creates an object of rest controller now how many objects do you think spring container creates of rest controller how many objects do you think i'm not sure i assume it is two one for the first thread another for the second thread that means if there are 200 concurrent threads landing on my application server there will be 200 objects of rest controller created never ever never only one object of rest controller class is created i repeat rest controller only and only one object the reason is that you see this when i say rest controller here you see there is something called uh, okay uh, at the rate uh, oh okay okay i am missing this point but it is very important for us to discuss ha rohit jaldi bolo main meeting mein hu acha main niche to nahi aa sakunga main paise bhej deta hu niche kitna paisa hua hai aapke ha main chahi to main niche yahan se khol ke de dunga aapko upar se khol dunga dekho ha theek hai paise kitne dene hain aapko 200 ha अच्छा ठीक है चलो मैं सौ रुपए भेज दूंगा आपको ठीक है नहीं चलो सौ रुपए भेज दूंगा Ah, uh, scope. Scope. Yes, I can see this here. There is an option here called I can say singleton, which is by default. What do you mean by singleton? What see see the name singleton? What does that mean? One single. In the entire year, in your in, in your entire Spring container, there will be one single object of this class, which is by default. This is the scope. But if I want to change the scope, if I can very well give. prototype what can i give prototype i don't want to get into the details of this for now understand the default is what singleton okay singleton is the default what does this mean it will have only and only one single object of this class in memory understand this okay don't forget so you will have how many objects one single object of this class in memory service imp l again one object all of these there will be one single object of all of these classes in memory so even if i have another thread concurrently running it is the same object of which the method will be executed same object correct that is the reason why you will find people saying never ever in your in any one of your spring beans spring components never ever maintain the state here what does this mean you may think i will write private integer uh, i i i'll just say id okay and i have id or something something like this and then i will go ahead and say id is equal to for some reason you know say 5 over here 
what will happen there is one object of this class in memory my dear friends there is one single object of that class in memory if one thread changes the value of 5 another thread will also change the value to 5 only or the other thread will also get the value of 5 only if at all the previous thread has already changed it why because it is the same object which is used in both the threads hence the object of this class is supposed to be is supposed to be stateless you will never mention the state over here now you will say okay fine but what about this this is also the state this is also the property in the class right the only difference this is integer and this is this no problem why because this also is a singleton when it actually is mapped this is also a singleton this is a reference of an object which is again a singleton why because it is used it is created by spring container you got that in short this is there won't be there won't be more than one object of rest controller in the memory there won't be more than one object of service impl and more than one object of you got that this is very clear but but when hibernate creates a session object it is not a singleton when the session object is created by this thread in this thread by hibernate similarly the session object will be created by the same hibernate by, by a different hibernate session okay sorry hibernate is the same framework okay hibernate is the same framework but the session object here if the id is one suppose just i'm just just for the sake of doing it you know this okay this will be another session object with id 2 or maybe the hash code 2 so your uh, you know your session objects are different per thread session session objects okay can i make a statement after the explanation that i have done rest controller service impl do impl are one per container of spring that is one per jvm for now you understand rest controller service impl do impl repository will be one per jvm and as a jvm one per application you can take it for that one per but session objects will be one per application or one per thread one per thread that means if at all there is one request coming over here this is private to that request one this is coming over here one another request this is private to another thread this is thread specific this is thread specific you getting my point two different and all the objects now the crux of the matter friends now the crux of the matter okay very important the crux of the matter all the objects objects of all the entity classes objects of all the entity classes now my dear friends you very well know what are entity classes right all of these are entity classes correct objects of all the entity classes which are created by hibernate after firing the select statement or after firing the update and insert statement in case of saving the entity to the database okay okay let's start with only and only retrieving firing a select statement whenever it fires a select statement it actually fires a select statement and whatever object is created it keeps the reference of this object in the session what does it do it retrieves does it fires a select statement to the database so hibernate is going to fire a select statement to the database for example select star from training where training id is equal to 245 this is what it will fire and after firing the statement it will get the result set it will loop through the result set uh, not loop there is only one object it will read the data from the result set create an object of which class no 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 session object is created yes you are right but it will create an object of which class and keep it in the session object tell me training object right training, come on training. yes sir correct very good it will create an object of training and that training where the id is 245 and i hope you are very clear on this point that hibernate very well understand what is the primary key yes or no <laughs> it understands why because we have annotated it with other id it understands now coming back over here so it will create it will keep this object training 245 over here in memory of that session before i proceed further tell me when do you think this rest controller object is will die when do you think will it die will it die after the response is completed 
or when this thread is completed with when this thread goes back into the pool do you think this will die through a rest controller service impl do impl no it is keeping it the reference of this object in spring container ka repas reference hai. spring container has the reference of all of these objects with itself you getting the point right so it will always and it is supposed to be singleton it is supposed to be one single object it will always use this object in all the threads it will not destroy that but understand one more important thing this session object that i'm talking about is this a spring bean is this a spring bean no i mentioned this who creates an object of session hibernate hibernate is not a spring bean it's a part of the framework this is what we have annotated as as bean at the red bean i mean at the red service at the red rest controller and blah 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 but this is not a spring bean spring container does not have a reference to it and what is the life of this particular session object only the life of this thread the moment this thread goes back into the thread pool the session object is destroyed you got that similarly this is a different thread the moment this thread goes back into the thread pool this session object will be destroyed so what will be the life of this session object first once again tell me the life of this session object will be actually only and only this thread you getting my point and the life is the entire thread huh? you getting my point or not so session object is created by hibernate session it fires a select statement like this it will create an object of training class and it will keep it in the session object now and from where do you tell hibernate through repository now you know very well what the point is hibernate is actually the implementation of repository you remember repository was just the api interface where is the implementation hibernate has the implementation who fires the select statement sorry it is hibernate hibernate that fires the select statement yes or no okay now from where do we invoke from do impl we invoke through the repository we say find all or say find by id okay we say what find by id through what through do impl who is the who is providing the implementation of find by id hibernate hibernate fires the select statement creates an object of training id is 245 it keeps it over here now from do impl once again i fire find by id on the same repository implementation is here it first checks whether in the session object there is a training object with id 245 or not so very interesting you getting it ram yeah right what will it do hibernate will check whether there is already an object in this in the session object and if yes it will not fire the select statement again it will pick up the object which is already in the session object and give it back to you super you got this very clear right this is called first level cache in hibernate what is this known as first level cache there is a second level cache concept also we will see that some other time but this is called this is the first level cache you got that once again i repeat hibernate it is the hibernate uh, you know framework i mean the implementation classes are there in that framework which fires the select statement and then it gets it creates an object of that class and it serializes the i mean i mean it it, it, it serializes the object in the session object in okay let me be, let me make it very simple it actually creates a training object and it keeps the reference of the training object in the session object and this session object is known as first level cache what is once again this is a very important point hence i am making you all repeat this again and again session object is per thread so this session object is different this session object is different come on make sense yes or no because this particular request is different and this request is different correct now i have a question is it is it that only from this dao dao impl and this happens to be training dao impl okay this happens to be training dao impl now suppose i have another i'll say chapter dao impl okay or i'll say topic dao impl correct from this topic dao impl also just hold on a friends just hold on please 